Winback is often touted as the granddaddy of the modern third-person shooter. Cover mechanics in games like Kill Switch, Gears of War, and Uncharted, as well as precise aiming mechanics and limb-based damage used in Metal Gear Solid 2 and Resident Evil 4, have in some way or another been influenced by Winback. And it's tough to go further back in time and try to find a game that nailed the rules down so well the first time. From a historical standpoint alone, it's well worth giving Winback a try. Judging the game on its own merits, however, is another issue entirely. The story is a pretty simple one with a 90s action movie flair. Terrorists have taken control of a United States super laser firing satellite, and if their demands aren't met, they will fire again once it recharges in three hours. There is no room for discussion. Our demands are final. Failure to comply will invoke dire consequences. It's up to the special covert action team, SCAT. Yeah, seriously, SCAT. These guys have to take down the terrorist and save the day. Not a whole lot else goes on. It tries to be a little bigger than what it is by making the terrorists into tragic villains since they're doing this for the benefit of their home country, Sarkozia. As far as we can determine, they appear to be the last remnants of a military resistance group defeated during the Sarkozian Civil War. Sarkozia! But there's really no development with these guys at all. There are a lot of cutscenes where the SCAT team members trade some banter and try to be humorous, again like a cheesy action movie. Jeez, John Luke! You scared the hell out of me! Sorry about that! Guess I should have knocked! Any progress? But every character is really shallow and uninteresting. What really sticks out like a sore thumb, though, is the awful acting. Stop blabbering and get the hell out of here! I can handle these goons by myself! All right, all right, I'm going! But you'd better catch up quick or I'm coming back for you! It almost hits the so bad it's good mark, especially with how off-tone so many lines come off as. But it just got pretty annoying after a while. Japanese dialogue is also available, and while I don't know any Japanese at all, I do think it sounds a lot better. At the very least, the inflection sounds more appropriate most of the time. <laughs> Okay, Mato, Iko. Okay, break time's over. Let's get those bastards. Now you're talking. Let's go. This is a laser trap. Sawaru to sokshi da na. Damn it! A laser. One slip and I'll be fried. Similar to the older Resident Evil games, our hero Jean-Luc can only aim his gun while standing still. He can stand and crouch while aiming, as well as jump in and out of cover, but that's pretty much it. There isn't even the option to strafe. Furthermore, manual aiming is slow and awkward to use, to the point where it's practically useless outside of some very specific situations. Instead, Jean-Luc will have to rely on auto-aim to get the job done. But with multiple enemies coming from every angle, taking cover becomes an extremely important tactical option. Which is good because there are plenty of flat surfaces to take advantage of. And thus, we have the foundation of Winback. Take cover and shoot terrorists. It sounds pretty solid, but there are a lot of flaws with how this system is implemented. The auto-aim system always targets the chest, even when the enemy is behind cover. This means that half the time, you're going to hit the cover and not your enemy. This is fine if it's obvious that there's an obstacle between you and your target, but it usually isn't. The laser sight is supposed to help in this regard, but it's not a strong enough solution. And while you might seem safe from behind cover, you rarely are. I'm not sure if this was an oversight by the developers, or if they meant to trick the player into using poor cover in an attempt to make the game more difficult, but it's pretty lame either way. Outside of the cover mechanic, trying to attack enemies on open ground is just ridiculous. A single enemy can be targeted ahead of time with the press of the triangle button, which does help out a lot, but it's tough to judge which enemy will be targeted and switching between targets is clunky and unreliable. It works alright for the most part, but it's very, very far from perfect. Especially with how much the camera just flies all over the place. 
that's another thing that needs to be mentioned. This camera is horrible. It gets caught on walls all the time, and you can forget about trying to turn it reliably while you're moving. The camera gets even more inexcusably bad when you consider that there's no vertical camera movement either. You can only rotate the camera horizontally. That itself is another annoyance since you can't use the camera to look above Jean-Luc, meaning his body is going to block anything right in front of him. It is possible to make all of this work and to make the game passable, as long as the level design and the general progression of the game work together to overcome these flaws. After all, this is an older game from a newer developer at the time trying to implement some new and untested features, so it would have been a smart move to play it safe in some other regards. Instead, what I assume is some kind of a sick practical joke, the developers have decided to make the game work against the player as much as possible. I just want to jump out of cover and shoot this guy, but it's clearly not happening right now. I press myself against cover, go to aim, and I just spin around in place. Great. How about this? I don't even know what I'm shooting at, and if it wasn't for the marker from the auto-aim, I wouldn't have any idea as to what was happening at all. And don't even get me started on the enemy spawn locations, they are just criminal in this game. Oh man, that enemy snuck up on me. I guess I should have observed my surroundings better. Nope, that guy doesn't even show up until you've moved up a little ahead. Good lord, that's a really dirty trick. And Winback does this constantly. Here, I shoot an explosive crate. These explosions are powerful and should wipe out anyone nearby. So who's this guy? Let's try this again and get the jump on him. You've gotta be kidding me. You're always thrown into rooms with enemies rushing you from every direction with very little time to get your bearings. You can usually hear enemy footsteps coming and they'll always yell out when they see you, but the game tries its best to put the player in sudden and unfavorable situations. Taking it slow tends to help sometimes, but there's always going to be someone from off screen taking pot shots at you. Combat in this game is just a really annoying experience and it's a problem when it makes up about 90% of the game. Winback tries to mix things up with multiple weapons. The shotgun and machine gun are your secondaries, and they give more power up close as well as longer range for auto-aim, respectively. In practice, though, the handgun is plenty good enough and has infinite ammo, so this regulates the secondaries to specific situations and little else. Same goes for the C4 and the rocket launcher which are rare items that are meant more for instantly ending certain encounters altogether when properly used. Overall, the additional weaponry does little to keep things interesting. I gotta give credit where credit is due though. The ammo and reloading mechanics are pretty nice. The handgun and machine gun keep a bullet in its chamber while the rest of the magazine is dumped. It's a cool detail, but it's wasted on the fact that this only applies to the machine gun since a handgun has infinite ammo anyway, and no other gun has this feature. Oh, but you know what, actually, I take back what I say about the nice reloading mechanic, because the shotgun doesn't even reload each shell individually. <laughs> How do you mess up one thing and not the other? Forget it. There's a versus mode for two players, and a challenge mode against AI opponents, which is a nice addition to the single player campaign but I hardly cared to try it for very long because the game as a whole is just so poorly developed. And I know this is an early PS2 game, so I shouldn't judge the graphics too much, but look at this environment. The rolling clouds, the totally empty vista. It's like this building is just floating in an empty void. It's a little disorienting and it gives me a headache. There's no excusing the idiotic AI. Once they spawn into the game, they run down a set path and ignore the player until they reach their destination, and then they start opening fire. This is obviously scripted, but why? This creates some really goofy scenarios at best, and it's fatal at worst because you're locked onto an enemy you can't hit while leaving yourself open to other enemies. And for a cover shooter, it's pretty odd that so many enemies just leave themselves wide open. 
Winback doesn't really have much in the way of glitches, and to be fair, it actually performs pretty well. Which is why it's so confusing that the mechanics don't line up properly at all. Why do enemies run around like morons? Why is there an ineffective auto-aim? Why is there an unreliable cover system? Why are these weird camera angles so forced? They don't do anything for the player and they're annoying as hell. Why are enemies introduced that can be easily and instantly skipped? Here's an example. This room is full of explosives. You're supposed to sneak past all of the enemies and reach the trigger at the end of the room. Then, once you do, enemy reinforcements show up and you can set off the trigger to kill them all. Sounds great, right? Except it's much easier to let the enemy set off the trigger themselves, which kills them, and when those reinforcements do show up, you can just go into the next room and instantly end the level. I'm not even trying to be funny or overreact here, but man, this game is a mess. Thankfully, the game actually provides me with a line of dialogue that sums up everything perfectly. What the hell is happening? It sucks! It really sucks! All of these flaws are multiplied on the game's hardest difficulty, although the easier ones don't fix the poor cover system or ridiculous AI either. But on the hardest difficulty, it's borderline impossible. I know Winback is pretty damn old, and I might come off as harsh, but Resident Evil and Metal Gear Solid had their fair share of unique and awkward controls, and they're still perfectly playable to this day. Mostly because the rest of the game is properly designed around its mechanics, and they don't try to actively screw the player over at every turn. I mean, yeah, those games have their moments too, but Winback is on another level entirely. It's like the developers purposely went out of their way to frustrate the player at every opportunity. Add on to the fact that there's a ton of backtracking, areas are constantly repeated, the AI is worthless, auto-aim is bogus, manual aim is a joke, taking cover is unreliable, the story is pointless, the acting is horrible. I'll stay here. Someone has to protect this position. Okay, Lisa babe. You're on your own for a while. Jake, wait! Oh well, he can take care of himself. If most of these issues were fixed, it would still just be a generic third-person shooter, but at least it would be playable, if a little drawn out. It might have stood out back then with its innovative cover system, and I certainly give it respect for inspiring the many third-person shooters that would follow, but it's completely worthless by today's standards. It's a neat historical landmark, but not one that you can reasonably have fun in. Well, I'd like to leave it at that, but I seem to be the only one who thinks this way. Is this the best hidden gem in gaming? Underrated gem? I'm sorry? Well, this guy seems to hate one back as much as I do, but I guess we're the only ones. Even the harshest scores on Metacritic are only an average 50, and the user reviews are mostly glowing. It's not my intention to call anyone out. I just want to make it clear that I apparently hold a very unique opinion on this game, and I'm sure that everyone's mileage will vary. <laughs> Thank you for watching my review. If you enjoyed it, click the like button, and if you'd like to see more, subscribe.